Hello, welcome to the second video on trigonometry. So, in the previous video, we had talked about what an angle in standard position is. If you remember, this means that if you had a rectangular coordinate system, <clears throat> the initial side, also known as the stationary side, is on the positive x-axis. Notice with the endpoint right at the origin. Now the terminal side, which is the side that rotates, also has the endpoint here. The vertex is at the um, origin. That's where both these endpoints meet. And notice that this angle, or that the terminal side here can move um, either counterclockwise or clockwise. A counterclockwise angle means a positive angle, and a clockwise angle means a negative angle. So what happens now when this terminal side does one full revolution? Well, we talked about uh, measurements of angles, and the one that we're most used to is degrees. So one full revolution is 360 degrees. However, what happens now if the terminal side were to continue moving after 360 degrees? So let's say that the angle, that the terminal side moved 360 degrees and then passes the initial side again. So because this is circular, it just starts a new revolution, this time adding on to 360. So angles can actually be bigger than 360 degrees. That just means they enter a new revolution. They enter a new cycle. So let's say that the original angle was, um, let's say that this is 45 degrees. So if the terminal side rotated all the way around 360 degrees and then continued past 360 degrees to get to 45 degrees, this larger angle here would be 405 degrees. Now, notice that these two angles here share the same exact terminal side. They both are different angles, but notice the terminal side for both of these lies in the same exact position. These are two examples of coterminal angles. These are called coterminal angles. And the formal definition of a coterminal angle is when the angles share the same terminal side. The formal definition of coterminal angles is two angles that share the same exact terminal side. So another coterminal angle would be, um, let's say that we wanted to rotate in the clockwise direction instead. So if the terminal side went clockwise and ended up in the same exact position, this angle would be negative 315 degrees. Notice that all three of these angles are coterminal angles. They are three different angles, but they share the same exact terminal side. And that is the definition of a coterminal angle. Now it is very easy to determine any coterminal angle of, an, of any angle given. All you have to do is if you have angle theta, to find its coterminal angles, you just have to add or subtract 360 degrees. Because remember, 360 is one full revolution. If you do 360 degrees, you're right back where you started. So anytime you, given an angle, you add or subtract 360, you're going to end up right back in the same place. So by adding or subtracting 360, this is the rule to finding any terminal angle. Let's go ahead and practice finding some coterminal angles. So let's say we have the angle uh, 30 
seven degrees. And I want to find a coterminal angle that is um, between 360 and 720. So notice from 0 to 360, that's the first revolution. Now, if you wanted to get into the second revolution, we'd pass 360, and 360 plus 360 is 720. So this means an angle that's going to be in that second revolution. So if we're given 37 degrees and we want to find a coterminal angle, meaning having an angle that has the same terminal side as 37 degrees, but this time that's between 360 and 720, all you have to do is add 360 degrees. So if we were to do that on a calculator, 37 plus 360 is 397 degrees. This angle is coterminal to 37 degrees. Let's do another example. How about if we have the angle uh, 215 degrees and we wanted to find a coterminal angle that is uh, between minus 360 and zero. So notice now this means a negative angle. That's in kind of, you could say, the negative first revolution where you go in the clockwise direction once. So I'm given 215 and I want to find a co its negative coterminal angle or its first negative coterminal angle. So all you have to do is subtract 360. So if you were to do 215 degrees minus 360 degrees, that would be on a calculator. Let's do that real quick. We get negative 145 degrees. These two angles are coterminal. This one happens to be in the first revolution between 0 and 360. This angle here is if you went clockwise instead. These two angles would end up in the same exact position. Let's make it a little harder. Let's say we have um, negative 3, let's say we have negative uh, 75 degrees. And I want to find a coterminal angle. between 360 and 720. So I want to find a coterminal angle to negative 75 degrees, which is between 360 and 720. Therefore, uh, if we were to just add 360 once, we would get a coterminal angle. But notice, if we were to do that, we would get 285. Now, this is technically a coterminal angle to negative 75. However, it is not an angle that's between 360 and 720. So in order to find the correct coterminal angle, we would just add 360 again. And this time we would get 645 degrees. And now notice this is an angle that is between 360 and 720, which is coterminal to negative 75 degrees. So remember, just adding or subtracting 360, anytime you do that, you just find another coterminal angle. So technically, every angle has an infinite amount of coterminal angles, just depending on which revolution you're looking for. Let's do one more here. Let's say that I were to give you the um, angle um, 532 degrees 
and I wanted to find a coterminal angle between uh, minus 360 and 0. So that means we want basically the first negative coterminal angle to this angle. So if we have 532, which is an angle which happens to be in the second revolution, it's past 360. If you subtract 360, what would happen? We would get uh, 172. But notice this is still a coterminal angle, but it's not a negative coterminal angle. So all we would have to do is subtract 360 again. And then we get negative 188. And both and all these three angles here are coterminal angles, but this is the answer that we were looking for. So here I'm giving you an angle, and here is the range I want the coterminal angle to these to be in. So take a minute, pause this video, and see if you can figure out the coterminal angles to these given these conditions. When you start the video, the answers should show up in about five seconds. And there you have it. Here are the answers that represent the coterminal angles to these angles, satisfying these conditions. Now, there's one more important use to understanding coterminal angles. Um, if you remembered in the last video, we also practiced uh, finding out which quadrant um, an angle is. So if you're given angles bigger than 360, sometimes it could be hard to visualize which quadrant that angle would be in. But if you just find its coterminal angle that's between 0 and 360, it can actually become much easier to find which quadrant it is in. So let's take, for example, the angle 573 degrees. So I want to know which quadrant the terminal side of this angle is in. So basically, it's hard to visualize. Even I can't really visualize this very easily. So all I would do personally is find its coterminal angle by subtracting 360. So I would do here 573 minus 360. And I would get 213 degrees. And now I know here that 213 degrees is here in the um, third quadrant. This is 213 degrees, whereas 573 degrees would have been the bigger angle here. But they have the same exact terminal side, so I know that 573 is an angle which is in quadrant 3, because its coterminal angle 313 is in quadrant 3. Let's do another example. So let's take, for example, negative 700 degrees. Which quadrant would the terminal side of this angle be in? So this is a little bit tricky to visualize, with ju just given this kind of crazy angle. So really what I would do is just find its coterminal angle, which is in the first revolution, the angle that's between 0 and 360. That kind of makes it a little bit easier to visualize. So if I were to just add 360, I think I'm just going to have to add this twice. Um, let's see what would happen. So negative 700 plus 360 plus 360 again, we get 20 degrees. And there we go. So 20 degrees is the coterminal angle to negative 700 degrees. So I know that 20 degrees is right here in the quadrant. So that would mean that negative 700 would also have to be in the first quadrant because they are coterminal angles and they share the same exact terminal side. So to visualize this, negative 700 would be like this. This is once, 
twice. And here we have negative 700 degrees. So negative 700 and, and 20 are both coterminal angles. They share the same terminal side. Therefore, they are both angles which are in the first quadrant. So given these angles, determine which quadrant the terminal side of these angles would be in. So pause this video, try to do it yourself, and when you start the video, the answer should be up in five seconds. And there you have it. Here are the quadrants that the terminal sides of these angles would be in. The last one was most likely the hardest one because you had to continue adding 360 to find the coterminal angle that was easiest to identify. So anyways, that wraps up this video. I'll see you in the next one.